I want to give you and me today a song, a song for Lent, a song for this season in the history of our world when we watch what is happening in Ukraine and we see violence and the evil that is always present in our world but that we can usually ignore, deny, or hide. In the Bible it says that after Jesus shared his last supper with his disciples, they then sang a hymn and then he left and he went to the cross. I always wonder what that song was. Every day we need a song and in Lent, in a dark day, we need it most of all. So I wanna tell you about the last song of Little Bird. This is a story that was told about 20 years ago. I heard it from a woman named Marty Ensign. She's a good friend of Dallas Willard's and she told it at a conference where she and Dallas spoke together. Little Bird was a friend of hers. She lived in Africa with her husband. They were at a hospital. And Little Bird was a Hutu in Burundi. And uh, he was a very musical little child. He grew up with a lot of joy in his heart. And you could always tell that he was around because although his people were not a particularly musical people, he was. And he was always singing or whistling. And so they called him Little Bird. Benyoni means Little Bird. And Marty said he actually fashioned a guitar because he loved music so much and his family would never have been able to afford a pre-made one. He was the kind of person who loved God, loved people in an infectious way. People just loved him back and he just moved forward in life. He ended up going to a teacher's training college and he was elected president of the student body. And um, then he came back home and ended up teaching at a school for children and within a few years he was made principal of that school. Marty said uh, he had the kind of spirit where like Corey Ten Boom, who you might know, a survivor of the Holocaust, her family used to hide Jewish people that were fleeing from the Nazis. When Corey would come and speak in Africa, she always wanted Little Bird to lead the music. When they started a little Christian radio station there, it was Little Bird who recorded most of those tunes. And not long after he had been teaching at that school, he ended up becoming the director of it, essentially the principal of it. And then one day, uh, soldiers came. You will know about, uh, at that time in Africa, the tribal conflict between the Tutsis who had the armies and the police and the power and the Hutus who were mostly farmers. And a group of soldiers came and they had a clipboard with them and they called uh, Ben Yoni out of his office and they told him to gather his teachers together. There were 11 young men, all of them were Hutus, all of whom taught at that school. And uh, he tried to deflect. Marty said he was amazing in his ability to find humor even in the most awful of situations. But they said, uh, these are the names on the clipboard, gather them together. And so he did, and those 12 young men uh, walked to a hill where they would be out of sight of the children. And Marty said, one of those teachers uh, just broke down and started sobbing and said to the soldiers, uh, please shoot me first. I, I could not stand to see uh, you hurt my brothers. And Ben Yoni said, oh, no, no, no. They will shoot me first, I am the leader and you will see what a glorious thing it is to go and be in the presence of Jesus. And then he turned to the soldier and he said, may I pray for you? And the soldiers did not know what to say. As you may well know, uh, a part of the evil of that regime is often it would press quite ordinary people into serving as soldiers and they would have to kill or else they would be killed. And so the lieutenant said, yes, you may pray for us. And Ben Yoni began to pray. And his brothers put a lot of stock in Ben Yoni's prayers. And so they thought, well, he's going to pray us out of this. 
And he did pray for them. He asked God to be very real and present to them and to give them courage and to take care of their families. But mostly, to their surprise, he prayed for the soldiers. He said, oh God, these men are about to do something that will be terrible and uh, they're going to live with a weight that is unbearable. So would you send them somebody who could tell them about Jesus and about grace and forgiveness so that they might be able to live and be free? And the soldiers didn't know what to do with this. And they, uh, Marty said, had a uh, little conference together. But the lieutenant said, these names are on our clipboard. If we do not kill them, when we go back to our headquarters, we will be killed. We must do this. So they marched them to the top of the hill. And the soldiers were ready to shoot. And then Banyoni said, uh, could I sing a song for you? He always had a song, and he had a song for this moment, too. And the soldiers didn't know what to do. Nobody had ever asked if they could sing before being shot before. And so the lieutenant said, yes, you may sing. And Ben Yodi began to sing. It's an old, old, old song. We used to sing it at the church where I grew up when I was a kid. You probably never heard of it. But it, it starts out, out of my bondage, sorrow, and night, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come. Into your freedom, gladness, and light, Jesus, I come to you. And then he went on to the second verse, and those teachers that were with him began to gain courage, and they began to join in. And then the third verse, and now 12 men, 12 condemned men singing with everything, all of their thought, their minds, their feelings, their wills, their bodies, their relationship with each other from their soul. Jesus, I come. And then the last verse, the fourth verse, this really happened. Out of the fear and dread of the tomb, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come. Into thy joy and pleasure, thine own, Jesus, I come to you. And then they sang the last note, and the soldiers put their rifles on their shoulders and shot and killed those 12 men. And that was the last song of Little Bird. And Marty said, you might be wondering, how did we ever come to know the story if they all died? It was the strangest thing. Those soldiers went back to their base and they went to the nearest pub to get as drunk as they could, as fast as they could, except the lieutenant and he did not touch a drop. And when it was night, he went to the Christian Literature Center and he approached an old Quaker woman who had been born in Africa. And he said, you must tell me about a God who could allow men to die like that because I want to serve a God like that. And so slowly she explained to him about Jesus and his life, and his love, and his death on a cross, and his resurrection. And that lieutenant gave his heart to Jesus. And he was so excited about this that he went back to his fellow soldiers and told them the story. And enough of them became followers of Jesus they, that they began to tell Bible studies. And Marty said, I wish I could tell you the end of this story, but I can't because they killed that lieutenant to shut him up. But of course, the story just kept spreading. That's the story of the last song of Little Bird, but of course it wasn't his last song. In a way, it was really his first song. We live in a world where although many of us are able to be buffered from it, death and darkness and bondage and sorrow reign, but they will not reign forever. And so we have a hope and our hope is not that our little lives turn out to be pleasant and manageable. Our hope is not that the news in the world won't interfere with our security or our wealth or our well-being. It is that out of my bondage, sadness, and night, Jesus, I come. That's your song. That's my song for this day. Into your gladness, into your uh, freedom, Gladness and light. Now we hear those words and think, oh, that must be a really pleasant life. 
No, no, no. You sing that song when it's your last song standing on a hill. Into your freedom, your gladness, your light. Jesus, I come. Guard your heart. See you next time.